if you go to Kilwa, you go to uh, Shanga, you go to Manda, you go to Mombasa, these were purely African settlements. These were basically African towns run by the Africans, but who were trading with the Arabs and other nationalities from outside Africa. Uh, they controlled uh, the trade, they were the merchants, they were middle people uh, getting items from the interior and selling them to the Arabs who were the traders. The Arab writer Al Masudi, who sailed to the African coast from Oman by Dao in the 10th century, described in detail the inhabitants of what he called the land of Zanj. There are many wild elephants in this land, but no tame ones. The Zanj do not use them for war or anything else, but only hunt and kill them for their ivory. It is from this country that come tusks weighing 50 pounds and more. They usually go to Oman and from there are sent to China and India. The Zanj have an elegant language and men who preach in it. One of their holy men will often gather a crowd and exhort hearers to please God in their lives and to be obedient to him. He explains the punishments that follow upon disobedience and reminds them of their ancestors and kings of old. These people have no religious law. The kings rule by custom and political expediency. As for the Zons, there's a an interesting article, and uh, there's some things I disagree with it, but I'll just pick out the thing that I dis I do agree with. Uh, Eastern Africa and the Indian Ocean to 1800: Reviewing Relations and Historical Perspective. In it, he uh, as far as the actual Arabization of the coast goes. He suggests that it began in the 16th century, starting in the 16th century, and at its height in the 19th century, it's in the 19th century where we get the term. Until the 19th century, we he hear the word Mungwana, civilized, and then we get the word Ustarabu, and that's at the height of so-called Arabization in the 19th century. Swahili on the coast. There was a perception that now you are plugging in to a, a higher culture and that your own status is thereby elevated. And in Swahili there is a word for civilization which is Ustarabu, meaning being like an Arab. There's probably a very interesting evolution of the concept of being Arab. Originally, you'll find that when the Arabs came, they looked up to the Swahili communities they found. But in due course, they acquired kind of uh, aristocracy. The funny thing about it is this aristocracy was not based on color. There was quite a lot of these aristocrats who were jet black in color. But they assume that, you know, the fact that you associated and called Arab at that particular point began to acquire a new political dimension of a being a, a superior people, a people that uh, are rulers rather than the ruled. So, these things are important to consider. Professor Tommy, he found, you know, trade secrets. Well, he says, it was thought that Swahili settlements were found by foreigners, particularly by Islamic traders. He's, but he says, but these discoveries show that the people here were interacting with other civilizations and long before the Islamic era. Uh, 